So do you know how you know when you are in a truly legit tackle shop run by pros? It's when you walk into the bathroom, had to take a leak when I got here, and lo and behold, the paper towel holder is hung up by 800 pound monofilament. That's when you know you're dealing with some real dudes. We are right here in Lighthouse Point, Florida with the one, the only, legendary R.J. Boyle. What do we got on tap, brother? What was the first thing I told you when you walked in? He said, can I use the restroom? I said, absolutely, as long as it's the number one. <laughs> I, There's no number twos in there. I followed so, the rules. I, fo I, fo follow the I rules. followed the rules. Now, for some heavy hitters, we do have some heavy mono. <laughs> That being said, today we're going to talk about swordfish baits, okay? Something surprising that we really never talk about. That's all we talk about. One of the only things we ever talk about is sword baits because we love them. We rig them all day long. We ship them all over the world. And today I'm going to take you through a number of different baits, why I like one more than the other possibly. And then we're going to go in. We're going to rig one. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to talk about the tools you need to rig them effectively. And uh, if some of the, sometimes when you're rigging, if there's one thing that you're missing, it sure makes it difficult to rig. So realistically, we're going to rig swordfish baits. Today, we're rigging my favorite one, the squid tentacle. Ooh, son! Get ready. If you don't know, and you should know, I can say with the utmost confidence, I am standing next to one of, if not the most knowledgeable rod and reel fishermen for swordfish around the world. So we are about to bring you some at fish blue water knowledge. Get ready. Always exciting to talk about swordfish baits. One of the things at RJ Boyle Studio that we're constantly doing is rigging bait for swordfish. Kind of known for it, swordfish, wahoo, big game, blue marlin, sailfish. We have a lot of customers. But specifically coming to swordfish, and today with Blue Water, you know, Jamie and I had discussed rigging bait. So before we get into the nuts and bolts and actually rigging a bait, what I want to tell you is you have a lot to choose from. There's quite a number of things, and there's quite a number of, of uh, baits and things to consider when you're sword fishing. So one of them here locally, South Florida, the average current in the Gulf Stream, which always moves to the north, you're talking about three and a half knots. That's a lot of current. At certain times of the year, with king moon tides, things like that, you're talking in upwards of five knots of current. After traveling the world at all the different, a lot of different locations, most of them, I can tell you that the most, one of the most difficult places to swordfish is here off our coast. Now, that being said, how does that relate to the bait? Whatever bait I'm going to talk about today can work in any place that we fish, whether you have a half a knot of current or five knots of current. The difference between the baits, okay, will be the toughness and durability of the bait, the ability to, for the bait to get one or two or four swats from a swordfish stay intact to give you the ability to hook them at some point. So when you're looking at a bait and you say, hey man, I'm, hypothetically, I'm going to go on a swordfish trip, I'm going to go out of Florida or I'm going to go in a high current situation, in general, because you have a lot of current, you want to fish a bait that's more durable. You need something to withstand a couple of, of hits. When you're in the Gulf of Mexico, when you're in New York, New Jersey, California, you might have wind-driven movement, no current. In those areas, really, you, you see the squid used, a whole squid more often, something a little bit more delicate because really you're not moving past the fish so fast. If a fish taps your bait or swats your bait, he's right there. The bait's not moving away from him. So down here in Florida, I'm going to go through some of the staples that we use for swordfish baits. Number one here, this is a Bonita strip. Okay, we call it a membrane bait. This bait is actually cut from the stomach of a Bonita. It's got a 10 non-offset hook in there, stainless skirt to fit, which is a size 30, that's on 300 pound test, which all of these baits are. Skirts, the, mo the, the monofilament, and almost all the baits are gonna be rigged on Tenno. So this bait, highly effective swordfish bait, Bonita, it's salted, it's brined, it's tough, it does have smell, looks great in the water, probably the number one fished bait in Florida. Now, the Bonita bait also, if you're looking at this, 
you're talking about the belly of the, of the bonita. So there's the sides of the bonita that sometimes we fold over, we call taco. And then there's the stomach here in the membrane, and then you got the belly. So bonita baits, highly effective. The go-to for most guys. Transitioning to a really a great bait. Now this bait, ladyfish. Okay, ladyfish, fabulous bait. Here's the difficulty, here's the con with a ladyfish. Ladyfish cannot withstand six or seven whacks from a swordfish. If you looked close at this bait, you can see stitching here, where that, that bait is Frankenstein stitched all the way back. So if he does whack the bait, it stays together somewhat and eventually hopefully eats it. The bait we're going to talk about and we're going to rig today that, honestly, it's taken me a couple years to get this bait dialed in from overseas to get it. Um, this is a, a squid tentacle. This is an absolutely deadly bait. This is one of my, by far, my favorite baits right now. Um, you're going to see me rig this step by step, and let me explain why I love this bait. Now, that's a rigged squid tentacle. That's an unrigged squid tentacle, okay? Some are thicker than others. The bottom line you're going to see as I rig it still have teeth inside the suction cups on here. But here's the deal with the squid. So when I, when I finally, why did we work so hard for this? Here's why. This is a wonderful bait. This, this is a great bait in a time where you're fishing where there's a lot of fish bait. So in the, in, in the winter season here in Florida, Tinker mackerel, Boston mackerel, fish baits start to migrate through our area. So when you, you see January, February, March, this bait becomes highly effective to match the hatch. The great thing about a ladyfish, it smells. When it gets whacked by a swordfish, the, the, the scales come apart. They fall. Very, very, very rarely will you ever get a bite on a ladyfish and, not, and, the, and the fish not come back and either eat it or devour it. This, this bait right here, it's almost like glitter. When they, when they whack that one time, the smell obviously comes apart and the glitter factor becomes giant with it. Problem is, the con, you're only getting two or three cracks, so you got to be good at hooking them. When we got the squid tentacle, here, here, here this, is, this is, follow me on this, this is interesting. So we tested them for about a year before we ever got our really our first shipment. So we were getting these small shipments of tentacles, experimenting with rigging from the time we started fishing these baits. Honestly, by far the most deadly bait that we have. Why is this? It smells like a squid, which is obviously in their diet. It looks like what's in the stomach of swordfish. Viper fish, some of the stuff that they eat matches what you're seeing here. You see this a lot. So this is, you talk about matching the hatch for what a swordfish really eats. Not only does it smell like squid, but it's got tentacles on it. It's, it's, got, it's got teeth inside of suction cups. This is what you see when you open up a, the center of a swordfish. And so to match the hatch, year round, that's the bait. Another point, you think an eel is tough? This is tougher than an eel. People say, well, why don't you just fish an eel if you like that action? And, and when you see this in the water and you see that action of a lifelike fish. I said, here's the difference between an eel and a, and a tentacle. An eel has, American eel has very little smell in the water. Very, very little smell in the water. So if you, if you to me, We'll never know if it smell truly matters, but I can tell you over, over years of doing it, I believe it does. Um, going back to the days of night fishing when we used to chum and, and chunk for swordfish, Miami Swordfish Tournament, where we caught basically the record in the, in the tournament, caught a 439 on a 50, 439 pound swordfish on a 50. We chunked all night for two nights. We caught three or four swords in that tournament. Um, all the chunks were in their stomach. What does that tell you? Smell does mean something. And to me, if I have the choice of something that smells or doesn't smell, I'm going to definitely go with a real bait. I'm, you know, you see guys using artificials. Not that an artificial doesn't work, but a lot of times an artificial bait creates a bite. You can get a bite, but it's like a, Andy Moy said it best. It's like a, 
You throw, a, you throw a, a, a ball to a dog and he sits there and picks it up and drops it. You throw a, a roll a piece of hamburger to him and see what he does with it. The reaction once you get the bite is different on a real bait. So that's where this comes into play for me. I love the smell of it. I love the action of it. I like the toughness of it. I like the length of it. I like the action of it. So the squid tentacle is what we're going to rig today. The other baits are great. No question. Squid tentacle right now is my favorite, and let's get right in and rig it. Come over my shoulder and check this out. All right, so let's, let's go through the ingredients real quick before we actually rig a bait. This is really an awesome time because a couple things I would suggest. If you're rigging your own bait, make sure, A, you have plenty of baits. B, it's a nice quiet area where you can concentrate. B, setup is everything. You're looking at a starboard area where we rig here at the shop. It's a nice place to rig. A lot of times we have something under our feet, so we're rigging and we're comfortable. Now, rigging is meant to be fun. And so standing in a 90 to 100 degree sun is not fun. So if you are doing this, hopefully your wife will let you do this at the kitchen counter after dinner. But anyway, I'm going to take you through the ingredients here to be able to rig a bait. You need to have all these ingredients. Without one, you're going to struggle. I'm going to start right here. This is 50 pound tacky wax. It's like dental floss, heavy with a waxy coating on top of it. That's what we use that to stitch up our bait. When we're stitching up our bait, we used a cl closed eye needle right there, not, so, meaning that the, there's no cut in the actual opening, so the floss from this wax goes inside this needle. Okay, one thing I'd stay away from here on the tip, down here by the point on the needle, do not use a mortician's needle, use a rounded tip needle or you're going you're gonna to end up cutting yourself on it. No mortician's needle, it also cuts the bait so it's no good. Make sure you've got a good pair of scissors to cut the floss. Okay, we are rigging on 300 pound monofilament clear with the appropriate crimp. Okay, the hook and hook and marker here. I'm going to sharpen this hook in order for me to get a really good edge on this hook. Even from the factory, most hooks are not that sharp. So what we'll do is, and I'll explain this to you, we're going to mark the tip of our hook. And then we're going to use the file to sharpen it, but I need to know where I'm taking off, so that's why we use the marker. Once we start rigging with our monofilament, we're using crimpers. Now, guys, you don't need those giant crimpers, those really, really big, expensive ones to do the job. This set of crimpers, or this is uh, Centro, or Bill Fisher, or, or American Fishing, those companies make a crimper this same exact size. This, this crimper is made for 300 pound monofilament and down. So it's perfect for this. The big ones can be cumbersome and, and too big. Ice pick to be able to put holes in the bait. There's your bait. Um, you're going to see us makes it easier to rig. Having the ice pick, one of the best things to have while rigging. And depending on the size of your bait, the appropriate skirt right there to go over whatever it is that you're rigging. So make sure that the skirt that you have is appropriate to the size at the top of the bait. Is a bigger bait better than the thinner bait? At the end of the day, if it looks great, smells great, swims great, and is in front of a swordfish, they're all great. So those are the ingredients. Without having or missing one of these, you're gonna struggle, but we'll go, we'll go right into rigging one, so check this out. All right, the most important thing here is not the hook or the marker. For me, it's definitely these glasses. They called me Coke bottles when I was a kid, and uh, I wear a pretty severe set of glasses. Anyway, that being said, the marker, permanent marker, a lot of times at it from the factory, and you can really see it on this hook, 7691S style hook, re relatively dull, okay, out of the pack. What do we do? And see, you know, if I was sitting here with this file called the bastard file and trying to sharpen this hook, you really can't, even if you didn't need Coke bottles like I do, you can't really see what you're taking off. So what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll coat over the top in red. That'll let us know as we're sharpening this hook, you're going to see what you're taking off. Don't be afraid of it. It's actually kind of cool looking on there. Get plenty on there. And that way when I go to sharpen this hook, you're going to understand why we did that. Okay, heavy duty bastard file. Sometimes you see the little thin fishing ones. This is a real one. You can get it here at our store. You can get this at Ace Hardware, Home Depot, wherever you're going. But anytime you look at a hook, like I'm looking at this 110761 style stainless hook, 
uh, from the factory, if you can really get in there on that and look at that tip, that's horrible. That's out of the package, and that's a terrible, terrible point. Okay, so which way do I go? Do I sharpen hook going this way, or do I go against the grain and sharpen it this way? Guys will tell you either way. Here's the only thing at the end, I'm gonna do a little test, and that'll, that'll show you um, how your hook needs to stay sharp, but check this out. So I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna go away from me. I'm not gonna push hard. This will take a lot off this hook. So as I slowly push here at the top of the hook, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little bit of a diamond effect on top. I'm just sitting it on there. I'm not really pushing. I'm testing it. I'm laying it on there. Not really pushing too hard, okay? Barely take off the finish of the red. Barely take it off, okay? Barely, it feels great. Now, come in here. Up underneath, there's a, there is an angle to this hook, and you want to basically touch that inside. Now, as I touch the inside of that hook, and off the tip, and I take that edge, that, that marker off, just barely take it off, roll the hook, come back to this angle. You'll get, you'll get taking a little bit of that red off, just a little bit, right there at the tip, okay? Get a little bit off there. Now come back on top, soft, twice, soft, twice. Now, now if you can come in there, now you got a sharp hook, you can see what it's, it's tearing your finger up. That's a sharp hook. Okay, now, you don't want to make it sh so sharp that it's, you're, you're, you're affecting it to bend over. Watch what I'm going to do with the hook now. As I'm doing this, I'm going to pull on the hook, and I'm going to pull down. Now, see what it's doing here to, the, to this? It's tearing up, to, it's going right through the starboard, but it's not bending the tip over. Now I know I have a strong tip. That way, if this hooks into a, a swordfish bill, is that, is that hard? So when you put this on here, you don't need that tip to bend over. So make sure that, and I'm peeling that right off. So that tells you how sharp that is. Get the end off, perfect, you're ready to go. Sharpening the hook is, is really, really important. You, get, you gotta remember, we're trying to hook a fish a half a mile away. So. Let's, let's make the rig, let's go through all the ingredients. Check this out. All right, the exciting part, the bait. So, in case you were wondering, if you come to our shop, here's the exciting thing. If you, they're like, guys like me need this. This is a swordfish bait. So I actually have it written on there. So some people wonder, if you just had that in a box, what is that really for? So the one thing is, make it, keep it simple, and let everybody know what you're, what you're selling there. Now, you talk about getting somebody excited. You look at a bait like that, I mean, right out of the package, one of the things we talked about earlier, and I, I need you to come in and look at this tightly. So these, these suction cups have the actual teeth still in them. So when we were talking about a ladyfish, we're talking about once a sword wax this bait, a lot of these teeth will actually come out of the tentacle suction cup and be floating, which entices another bite. So again, this is a deadly looking bait. The only thing you would want to do if you had to is come up here depending on the skirt that you wanted to fit this over. This looks a little small for that bait. So we're going to go with the bigger profile. So again, matching, matching the bait up to the skirt. So I'm going to go with the larger profile skirt here, knowing that later on I'm going to end up trimming this off, but we'll do that at the end. Right now, before I rig my bait, one of the things I know, I want to get a nice, clean, rounded end here. So I'm going to take those scissors, and we're going to shape that bait just a little bit. Again, this is a tough bait. And there are a couple things you need to consider when you're sword fishing, especially with, with sword fishing because of our high current situation. We're dealing with basically a three and a half to four knot current. Over time, this bait's actually going to get tougher by being in the water. It's not going to get weaker. It's going to get tougher because it's going to absorb salt. And when the bait absorbs salt, it actually makes it, it's like a brine. So you're getting the natural brine from the Gulf Stream. So trim it off the top. Basically, you got your, your, your tentacle. You're ready to go. And uh, let's talk about getting the, the, the hook inside. All right. So... We got our bait, okay? You got the squid tentacle, you got your hook. Guys, you can use a 10 owner or 110. This is an 110. When I look at a bait here, take your time 
That's why I say rig inside, rig in the air conditioning, figure it out. But at the end of the day, you want a comfortable area to do this. I don't want to really rig this hook way at the top like you're seeing. I want to get that hook down a little bit. That way the head of the skirt, once it's on this bait, will be up here and the hook will be back a little bit. So again, not way up here. Don't be afraid to come down a little bit and I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. But right now, so you've got a, an area, you use your ice pick, but you're going through, so you're marking where your finished product will be, okay? Now, another item, while I'm marking this, I'm looking at where my hook comes out. So while I've got this one marked, don't be afraid to come here and mark where your bait needs to come out. So I'm marking that as well. This is where I need the glasses. Okay. We've got two marks now. One of the things I forgot in my list, which I obviously I struggled with, I forgot my knife. Again, small bait knife, Victrinox makes this knife. Um, serrated or non-serrated, all you're doing is finding a spot where your hole was to be able to put that hook in. Okay? And there's a number of different ways to get it in, but bottom line is we need to get this hook in the bait and we're going to start here. Go ahead and put the eye of the hook in the squid as good as you can. Slowly roll it up. Now, if you're struggling with pushing this up, and this is a tough bait, remember, you can take that ice pick, go straight up, bore yourself a hole for you guys who want to rig them yourself. So as you're pushing through there, you're, you're creating a cavity in here for the hook to go up and in. Here, push it forward. Your end result will look something like that. Okay, once you've got your hook in, okay, Couple things you're gonna do, you're gonna find the eye of your hook. You're gonna create a ghost hole there. So basically go through the bait out the other side. That's what you're looking at. Once you've got that, grab your monofilament, cut the monofilament at an angle to get a sharp finish. Put your crimp on there. Hold your hook, hold the bait, hold the monofilament, pull that out. This is the tough part if you can get it through. Got it through the first time all the way through the out and outside of the other side of the bait. Take the end, come to the top, inside the crimp. Now, don't worry about getting a little excess outside of the crimp. You can always trim this off. So for rigging purposes, get yourself a little extra and slowly kind of whittle it down towards the top of the bait. If you can see that now, everything's lined up at the top of the bait. So you've got your crimp. We've got our line going through the eye of the hook and the, and the actual hook itself is centered. At that point, we're going to crimp this. Again, using the smaller crimpers, don't use the big ones. You're going to use the largest hole. This is a Centro crimper. Again, Bill Fisher makes the same crimper most times on this one. On 300 pound test, it's the large hole right there at the top of the crimper. As you crimp, when you crimp anything, 60 pound, 100 pound, 600 pound, 800 pound, always crimp, never going to the end of the crimp. You want to, at the end, you're going to see this little elephant ear left for the mono to be able to come out that hole. I don't want to cut the mono at the end. So I'm going to go all the way down and push. I'm going to slide up a little. I'm going to push down. I'm going to keep coming. And I'm going to go just prior to the end where you can see that little elephant ear sticking out. And I'm going to push back down. That's the proper way to crimp without cutting that mono at the end. And I left that trim port part just for you to see that. So. Right now, the basis of the rig is rigged. 
It's freaking awesome. This is in line. It's pulling straight. Remember, in a three or four knot current, if this is off, if anything's off here or the hook's sideways, this bait will spin. You want this bait to be able to swim. One of the beauties of this bait is compared to a, a bonita bait or a ladyfish is the fact that I don't need to use a lot of floss. You know, some of those other baits look like Franken baits, we call them, because they got they got a hundred yards of floss in them just to hold them together. So what we're going to do is, just prior to us putting the skirt on, we'll go ahead and take a look at the bait again, see if we can firm up some spots with, with uh, floss, but to be honest with you, I really don't think so. Let's take a look at it again. Pretty tight here. Now, you know, this is an interesting part because Anytime you're rigging, right, you, you look at whether it's a, I don't care if it's a, a Spanish mackerel, you're rigging a swordfish bait, whatever you're rigging, if you look at something and think that you can do something better to that bait, now is the time for you to do it. So for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give myself some insurance stitches. If I put this out on the buoy and I get a bite on it or pull a fish off, I want to be able to leave this sucker out there. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the top of the top of the tentacle. I'm going to go through the tentacle here, back to that side. I'm going to come back to me, go through the, through the eye of the mono as well again. And what this is going to do is fasten it to the monofilament at the top. Once I turn it sideways, I'm going to take the two ends, make an overhand loop knot, Go inside the overhand loop, not pull the two ends tight. So what did I just do? Let's do it one more time. Loop knot, go inside the loop knot, pull the two ends tight. Okay, I just tied the bait to the monofilament. Okay, so by tying the bait to the monofilament here gave me another strong point, which is huge when it comes to sword fishing. Bob, you might... So you went just... So you went through the loop itself, Correct. you didn't go through like the eye of the hook or anything? No, right? I you did just... not go through the eye of the hook. I went through, all I did was go through the loop okay. of the mono and tied it to either the side. The eye's laying flat anyways. Yeah, yeah. yep. yep. Okay. But it's still all lined up, everything looks straight and it's, it's perfect. Down here, really no stitching is necessary or required. At this point, I'm gonna look at this go and go, okay, what am I gonna do here now? So. The end result might be a bait that looks about like that. I'm going to take off half that skirt. So as far as skirt color, people ask me, does it really matter? I don't know. I'm not a swordfish. All I know is what I like to fish and, and what seems to work for us. Pull that down. Oh. Okay. So. This part actually fits perfect on the bait. You can see a little bit of the squid out the top. I like the bars. The bars to me, you see a lot of uh, uh, skipjack tunas, um, blackfin tunas. They, they, a lot of fish have these bars. I like the, in this skirt, I like the foil look. See that foil that's on top of that skirt? To me, it's a reflection. So remember, 10 or 15, 20 feet away from this, you have a light that's down there in pitch black and it's, it's reflecting off of a sparkle skirt with a foil finish. This is, the, the, and that brightens it up. I love this, the inside of the skirt. It's got the, the glitter and it's silver. If I take a blue and white light, which are my two favorites, blue, blue and white, you're gonna be tight. But if I, if I put that down there and I put a white light reflecting off of that, it's, it, this bait looks electric. So this fits perfect. The hook is perfect. The skirt is perfect for the bait. I'm going to finish this off now with a stitch. And this is insurance. Now, most guys don't do this. We always do this. I want you to think about something for a second. If I take this bait and I have a swordfish that's hooked onto this hook and I'm fighting a swordfish for however long he's shaking his head, he's shaking his head and he's, he's making runs. You see this skirt? This skirt rides back off the bait, the skirt rides up this leader and is pinned on your snap swivel. And a lot of times a wahoo or a barracuda will eat that and cut you off. So the reason that I'm putting a stitch into this is so this skirt does not get eaten. So I'm going to go through the skirt, take a look, my hands, through the skirt, out the other side. Come to you one more time on this side, 
I'm going to go through this basically the same hole out the other side. Again, guys, when you're doing this, remember, this is why I do not use a mortician's needle. If you're using a mortician's needle that has angles here, you're not only cutting the, cutting the bait, but you're cutting the floss when you go through. So you want a rounded needle. That's why it's important to have that one. Come to this side, undo it, pull your floss to this side, take the two ends, make the loop go in, pull tight, grab the ends, pull down. Take this, trim it off. Absolutely deadly. There you go. Last thing, putting baits away, storing baits for sword fishing. A couple things that we do on the crew platform. We, you know, the littlest, simplest things. How do, how do you coil a leader? And you see, how do I make everything the same? Guys, grab the scissors, put it right there. Go around your hand, pinky and, pinky and thumb. Four, five, six, take the end. Use a rubber band or simply go through the actual rig itself. That way all the sizes are the same. And there you go, at the end, you're left with a really, really deadly swordfish bait, a squid tentacle. Can I wipe these hands on you? <laughs> <laughs> I told you it smelled. Man, guys. <laughs> Dude. All I can say is wow. Like, sometimes you just gotta let the guy do his thing. I was behind camera just like you guys as an information junkie, just soaking it all up. And you know, you know how you can tell when somebody is an expert at what they're doing is I had some questions that I was gonna throw at him right here, Bob. Mm -hmm. And I just sat back, I'm like, let me just let you do your <laughs> thing. No doubt. And he answered my questions. But there's, I'll give, I'll, actually, let me give you one real quick. I love it, give me a question. So you, you did this masterfully. And mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about this, guys, is it's gonna live on the YouTube channel and you can watch it as many times as you want to learn. Um, and I got more information about this guy to come. But like, on, an, on a typical trip, like how many of these baits for yourself will you rig or will you carry from the pre-rigs out of the shop? on a day of fishing to be eight, prepared. Eight baits. Eight's the I think uh, here, here's the, truthfully, when you look at it, could I use all squid tentacles? Yes, but the human mind doesn't allow for that because the minute you and I go out and we hear that Tim Pickett from LP just caught one on a ladyfish, mm -hmm. your mind's going, well, well, we're not getting bit. Maybe if we had a ladyfish, we'd do it. I would suggest two different types of baits. Because on an average day, about how many drops would you be making on an average day? Truth be told, we're going to make four to five drops. Four to five four drops. Four to five drops. Now, if they're biting and right. you're starting fishing at sunup, you got to remember, I can get bit at sunup. Now, with this bait, the beauty of this bait, sometimes I can fish it twice. Right. I'm a weird guy about fishing bait, but I go with more than eight. Right. But you have to remember one of the things that you, know, you say, my gosh, eight baits. Well, that would cost me eight times 25 or tw whatever these are. That's $200. But you have to remember that you're going 25, we're going 25 miles. People around the world are going 40 miles to up to 140 sure, miles. Sure. So when you look at the bait or the cost of the bait, if you don't have the it's time for fractional. this, it means it's, it's this big. Right. It means nothing in the mix of it's it. A, it's a lot more costly not to have it when you're out huh. there and you need it. And you said, oh my God, you know, we've gone through everything we have and it's only 11 o'clock. You know what, here's you the know? scary part of it. It's a, that question that you're asking, Jamie, is, hugely important here's why i cannot tell you how many times i was down to one or two baits in the day and i'd put it behind the boat getting ready to go ahead and make a drop and a mahi would eat it sure and then yeah. it's and our barracuda would eat you right. and now all of a sudden you went through two baits and you didn't even hit the bottom yet. right so it's a great question eight baits minimum the trip got shorter yeah so the there's so many more questions and so many more things that i could sit here and talk to you guys about and i'm sure you probably were saying Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. But here's the beauty of it. Like, I wanted to take this opportunity because obviously, you know, we just packed into this 15, 20, 30 minute video, whatever it ends up being, like decades, decades of trial and error and expertise into this video because RJ was nice enough to take the time out of his day to share this information with you guys. But whether you know it or not, you have, a, cr a platform, a crew platform. We we and this platform, guys, this is like 
the tip of the iceberg in terms of the knowledge, the information, what he has gained and people that, and other professionals in the industry that he has relationships with that, I mean, we're talking hundreds of years of combined experience that you pack into this platform, you know, um, it's a subscription-based platform, but they have the opportunity. How many films? How many films did you say? Almost 300 now. 300 plus films, mm -hmm. and, and you're still continuing to build on every that. Every week, let out a film every I've week. I've been in and seen it. Um, it's beyond impressive. And then beyond that, obviously, you have some other added perks, like members of the, of sure, the crew sure. get access to some pretty deep discounts at times Honestly, here in the store. It's the discounts, it's a combination of all of it. It's the crew tips. One of the things I gotta tell you for what we do, I love to teach, you know, you're a, you're a right. teacher as well. I love to teach, I, I love- It's how we grow the sport. You know, and you hit it on the head. I'm around people like yourself who have no problem sharing their information. And Ronnie Chapman said it best to me one time. Right. He said, you know what, RJ, you know, some people, some real fishing guys will say to me, Man, you know, oh, freaking RJ showing everybody how to do it and all that stuff. Here's what Ronnie Chapman said about wahoo fishing. He said, let me tell you something, son. I'll hand you my rods. I'll give you my lures. I'll tell you what time to be at the spot, and then I'm going to go out and I'm going to smoke you. <laughs> because that, that's what sure. he, he did for a living. Right. At the end of the day, there's execution. Right. We have an instructional platform that Andy Moyes, uh, Sean Olds, but we've traveled around with some of the best fishing guys sure. in the world, on the planet that are willing to share. So at the end of the day, yeah, we make a beautiful swordfish bait, teach you how to make a wind on leader. We'll talk about fishing rods, right. the different, there's so much instructionally there that you, I mean, you can spend weeks and weeks and weeks and never scratch the surface. But yes, that's my, if there was one thing that I truly love, the crewplatform.com is what it's called. And it's, 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 and there's links to that on your uh, RJ Boyle studio. Yeah, or you go website. right through RJ Boyle and you can do that, but man. Yeah, you can get all the snippets on there, guys. Uh, monthly email newsletter, fishing report that he has coming out. I mean, it is, it is just loaded, loaded with content and information. You know, no matter where you're at on this, I've been fishing my whole life, my whole life. I consider myself a pretty knowledgeable fisherman. There's a zillion things in there that we never stop learning, right. Jamie. We, we, you, I'm 55. You're how old? Are you 47. Now? Yeah, you look 55. <laughs> no, I mean, now you look 47. Now, but the truth is, man, the truth is, I still have passion for this. You're a passionate guy. I'm a passionate guy who like to fish. I'm going tomorrow. I'll be fishing tomorrow for 12 hours. I love it. Right. And so for me, it, you know, to be with some of the guys, to see the little techniques and tricks and sharpening a hook with sure. that, with the red on it. Little things right. that you don't, peop, most people don't think of. I've been taught some really cool stuff and I was lucky enough to work on some of the best boats right. in the world, so. Well, the anyway. last thing I'm gonna say before I wrap this is, you know, if you're a guy like me as well, you know, I run my own business full-time, very busy. A lot of times I love the idea of, in theory, of doing this myself. And then there's the reality yeah, of how much time I actually have to do it. And so just know, like in here in his store, he has an army of guys that are right there just beneath him or at his level in terms of their ability. Uh, yeah, and my level. if you're on the platform, you know, um, mm -hmm. you're going to have access not only to order this stuff at discounted prices at times, but it's available to you if you don't have the time or the motivation to do that. So in this video, um, we are going to share with you down below in the comment section. We'll give you all the details of what Bobby shared in terms of what goes into the tackle um, to make this rig, to build this rig. The contact info will be down below, uh, phone number for the store, website address. You want to call them, any questions, anything you need. Obviously, they can take care of you. And the last thing I'm going to tell you guys is like, I, I mean, I've, I've been on a slump trying to catch one of these daytime swords. So like, you're standing next, off. like, hey, do you guys think, do you guys think that RJ Boyle should come out fishing with us to go catch a day, daytime sword with this badass rig right here? If so, drop a comment below and say, damn it, take Encore, Jamie Bunn, and Fish Blue Water Fishing Bobby. Drop that comment below. I want you to prove how bad put the pressure you want to see me. us out on the water Just with this guy. Put the pressure on <laughs> Brother, All right, man. thank you so much. Yes, sir. We hope you enjoyed this uh, action-packed, informative video from the man himself, R.J. Boyle. The man, the myth, the legend, from Hillsborough Boulevard to Sample Road, east of Federal so, Highway. Thank you for your time, brother. We'll see you for the next Fish Blue Water video.